Hello and welcome and we're on to the third part of the Watchers Law for the Wild West Exodus game which is absolutely fantastic and the models are great and I've had a quick game with my lawman posse using the Infernal Affairs and Helen, Helena Miller was absolute badass in that combat. It was great, I enjoyed it. It's a nice small game which can fit on a 3x3 board. So we're continuing with the law and we're continuing with the Watchers. Those who are just catching up, the Watchers are an alien hegemony which go around bringing in species from other planets to create a peaceful galaxy and at the moment they have spotted Earth and Earth has been, especially on Fair and Atlantia, two islands, have been surprisingly forward in their technological and cultural, culturally speaking. So we're going to be talking about a third part and things are getting interesting. Because of the interference of the Order and the Hex, the members of the Watchers were getting ready to eradicate the island of Atlantia. The Watchers do not take it lightly when a species has been pushed forward, evolutionary speaking. So all the clades upon their upon Vera were ordered to stop and whatever their objective was and leave Earth. It was then a peculiar petition was delivered to the Viridian Alpha. The Cerulean wanted to remain. This was in direct opposition to the orders given by the hegemony themselves. After the denial, the situation worsened, as not only did the Cerulean leave the clades, they started talks with these humans. It quickly escalated to violence when the Ectorian and Viridian were attacked, not just by blood-crazed humans, but from beneath their fairy feet, monsters from nightmares attacked. The Viridian Alpha came under attack from the Cerulean themselves. After a devastating psychic attack, the humans finished the Viridian Alpha with blades piercing his skin. It was at this moment the Alpha knew they had found the Hex. The Watchers aboard the Ark Vault were completely unaware of a battle that had killed many of them at Akrotiri. With little effort, the Watchers targeted the island of Atlantia. The ship's portal generators were massive and big enough to dematerialize a 20 km wide sphere around the island that reached down to the bedrock. In less than 20, less than a second, the waves quickly filled the space that had once been Atlantia. Two greys had managed to survive the Hex's ambush. They retreated to the geothermal generator that was part of the unfinished Watcher base upon Ferrer. The beast and human, <coughs> the beast and human hordes of the Hex were heading straight for the pair of greys. There would be no escape for them now, and they both knew it. This attack was not going to go unpunished, and they detonated the geothermal reactor causing a chain reaction that tore through the Earth's crust with a final embrace the explosion disintegrated the aliens. The eruption was so great that it was observed by the watchers upon the arc vault that was orbiting Earth. Now, along with Atlantia, Thera was no longer. The Hex, humans, watchers, everything and everyone disappeared. A few cultures such as the Egyptians and the Chinese would go on to record weird phenomenon such as the sky filled with ash and fire. Whole communities were destroyed by the tsunami that came with Atlantia's destruction and the eruption of a blit that obliterated Pharaoh. After the attack by the Hex, the destruction of the two islands, the Watcher kept a close eye on Earth. For months, the Watcher scanned constantly for any signs of either the Order or the Hex. A myriad made of Viridian and Zeroclades made a heavily armed humans on Earth. With the Watchers on board, the Ark World was satisfied. There were no trace of either clade, they left only to return 50 years later. When the continued lack of interference was observed, time passed and observations became few and far between. Human development continued and abated. The Watchers hoped in a couple of millennia it might take their place among the Watchers. Yet, it was because of the events on Earth, the Watchers started searching for traces of the Hex and the Order. Though none was discovered on sentient world, was in ru ruins of two dead worlds that, broke te that broken, te broken technology was discovered. Technology that bore all the hallmarks of the weapons that the Speaker of Atlantia. These were dead worlds now, but they may have or not always been this case. Thank you very much for watching. This was actually, like I said, it's getting more and more interesting. I'm going to start talking about other lore now. I'm going to be going into Age of Sigma. And I'm going to be doing some more 40k law as well. I might throw in some Kings of War here. But I'm going to also change the name of the chapter just to Reziel. With some new artwork as my picture. So this is nothing to do, I've got to say this, this is nothing to do with the boycott. 
This is just because I enjoy these mini war games. I enjoy painting and building the models. I just like sharing it with you guys, and that's really it. And I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you enjoy it next week's. And I hope you enjoyed the video that I'm doing this week, which is a comparison between two boxes, which is the Kings of War Shadows. This right here, Shad War in the Hold, and of course the Age of Sigmar Dominion box. That's going to be coming out either Wednesday or Thursday this week. Not quite sure yet. As always, you leave a comment. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, as always. And tell me how your day has been. Yeah, just do that. And what are you painting, what are you doing. And have a great day and enjoy whichever hobby you're doing.